I'm Amy Waddle, and I am passionate about advocacy. I enjoy giving voice to people who don't have a voice of their own um, when that comes to either my vocation is a special ed teacher. Um, and right now I work for Ogle County Educational Co-op and I'm in a life skills classroom. So I have students who don't have a voice at all physically. Um, and so I try to be that voice for them. Advocacy is important to me for a number of reasons. Because I think a lot of people don't either know the correct format to go through, the correct channels to go through, or are too scared to do it themselves. So they need that person for the in-between to do that. And I am more than happy to be that person for those that can't. Back to when I was, you know, grade school even, I always wanted to play teacher. I never wanted to play house. My goal was to be a teacher since I was very young. Um, in fourth grade, I worked with another classmate. They had fellow classmates help. And um, there was quite a few of us who started with him. He was very low verbal-wise, barely spoke, um, would have tantrums because he was frustrated and didn't know how to communicate that. And so sometimes would get aggressive with whatever activity we were trying to do with him. And so by the end, there were only two other students and myself that still worked with him by the end of the year. Um, and even though it was really tough, I really enjoyed it. And by the end of the year, he recognized me enough that he spoke my name. And so after that, I was like, this is what I want to do. Um, this is where I want to be. And so even though I grew up in a small town and we didn't have a lot of opportunities for that sort of thing, um, that passion drove me to know that immediately when I went into high school, I took the classes I needed. I looked at applying to schools that were good on education. I ended up at NIU. Um, and so I, yeah, I've wanted to be a teacher for forever and fourth grade is when I decided special ed. First three years teaching were at Belvedere Central Middle School in the self-contained autism room. Absolutely loved it. Um, I ended up at Byron for a year didn't really wasn't the best fit and so then I ended up at Jefferson High School in Rockford. Um, my first two years there were self-contained ED, the emotional disability and so that was actually a lot of fun. A lot of people were like weren't you scared and I'm like no. I'm like you build the rapport with the kids. That's that's what I do. Um, once they know you care about them they're willing to do anything for you. Um, I got work out of kids that Previous teachers couldn't get work out of. I had students that would come to me for all kinds of things. Um, and then that position got downsized. They didn't have enough students, so I got bumped over to, um, I did co-taught English for two years there. Um, and that was a lot of fun. And then they opened up another position that was solely focused on advocating for our students that were going into classrooms that they needed more support in, but to be as independent as possible. So um, we went and I did five years of that there, um, which was one of my, probably my favorite job. Um, I was able to go talk to teachers. I was able to help the students learn to advocate for themselves, um, as well as do some of that when they didn't feel that they could do it at the moment. So it was a lot of teaching them and preparing them for what life would be like after they left the high school and the comfort of having me as a backup. Um, and so I was able to teach other teachers what was expected and what they could be able to do because sometimes they're like oh well I'll just give them this assignment and they didn't really understand like no you need to push them like they are totally capable they can do these things they just need X Y and Z to be as successful as everybody else we need to figure out what makes them successful and that could be a variety of different things so to teach the kid what they need and be able to use their voice to do that as well as me letting other people know that you can expect a lot from them and that's totally okay. Um, I did a lot of um, work with that and yeah, it was probably my favorite job, just helping the staff and the students get to make those connections and watching them grow and just blossom and being able to say, no, I do need this and it's okay that it is different from what everybody else is doing. When they get what they need to be successful and to see that growth, 
it's amazing. Um, when you can see one of the students that I had when I was still in Rockford, he really needed a different placement and I fought for that even though some other people didn't agree. And I actually still have contact with him and his family to this day. Um, he loves country concerts and so it became a thing that every time he went to a country concert he would pick out a shirt for Mrs. Waddle and he would pick it, he would go, he'd spend his money, he'd wait in line and he'd get me a shirt every time because I felt that he needed a placement that was smaller and more support for him and it got to the point where he didn't want to do breakfast with his family out and about because it was too overwhelming. And so with the changes that we did for him and the advocacy that we did, he was able to then learn how to do those things on a much smaller scale that when he now, like he goes to concerts, he goes to breakfast and he will order his own meal by himself and say, I want the pancakes without the butter with extra syrup completely independently. And so my goal for a lot of my students is to get them to be as independent as possible and whatever that takes. And it looks different for every student. I have some students that that may never be a possibility, but we find ways for them to be independent in other ways. The hardest part about advocacy is changing people's minds. The mentality of we always do what we've always done and so sometimes when you have to think outside the box to do that, you can get pushback and that can be difficult to make those things happen when they need to. Um, and so sometimes that resistance can be frustrating and very going uphill sometimes can be very taxing on me as the advocate trying to push forward. So currently I am involved in a team that is starting the Aruna Run. Um, it's called the Aruna Project and here in the States what we do is run the 5Ks to help raise money and awareness for women who are in Mumbai, India currently in sex trafficking situations. So um, this is, Jake and I are both doing this together so it's nice to have a partner in this right away. Um, and we are getting everything in order to get this 5K going in DeKalb and then we will be doing that at the end of July. So the run is going to be in DeKalb um, at the end, the last weekend in July and we will be having all kinds of vendors there and communication and people willing to share their stories and the Aruna Project, the company themselves, actually have a factory that is over in Mumbai, India, that they then, once they save the women and get them out of danger's way, they then provide them opportunities to stay out. And so they have um, actually a shop online that they, all the material that are made, they have different bags and running gear that the women themselves make once they're out. So it helps give them more of that freedom and more of that independence to be able to say, no, I'm done with this. So it's really a great company and organization. And so all the funds that we raise during the run then goes directly to freeing women that are in that situation over there. Um, and so I just, I really like their philosophy on going and saving them as well as then giving them something to be able to stay out of that situation because a lot of times, I forget the exact statistics, but if you don't have something to do afterwards, the likelihood of you going right back into that same situation is very high. So the fact that they give them skills in a safe environment, they pay them better than any other job around, they give them health care, they give them a lot of things to be able to stay safe once they're out is, I find really enjoyable and I'm glad that there are people that do that. So even though I can't go over there and help in that situation, I can be on this side of the states and go, hey, this is what we do and I can advocate for them and go, hey, I wouldn't want to be in that situation. I wouldn't want anybody I know to be in that situation. Can we help them? I want to give them that voice of, no, it is okay to walk away. It is okay to get out of that situation, no matter what it is. Um, and so when the person running this 
reached out to us and was like, hey, I really think you and Jake would be a great fit for this team. I was like, that's 100% something I can get behind. It's another group that I can reach, that I can be the voice for. I guess the biggest thing I would say is, especially when you're in a situation and you're not sure like, hey, should I say something? Should I not say something? Like, it's always best to speak up and be that voice for somebody else. Like, hey, do you need help? Whether it is a kid crying in the middle of the grocery store having a huge meltdown, like that mom just may need a break and maybe they need somebody else to just say, hey, what you doing and give them a smile. And sometimes that can be all they need to snap them out of it. Sometimes you're at a baseball game for your kid and you see some other kids spinning circles and doing something that seems a little different. Wave at them. You don't have to ignore them. You don't have to be like, oh, that's different. That's weird, that's bad because it's not, we're all different in our own ways. And so just being able to just be kind all the time, even if it is just a smile and a wave can go a long way in just a parent's life when they're struggling with those things or a kid's life like, oh, somebody actually recognized me. Like, I think that's what I would say.